Canadian Muslim organizations have been quick to respond to the alleged terror plot and the charges against two suspects who are Muslim. The Muslim community in Canada dates back to before Confederation, and the Muslim population in this country is now close to one million. I'm joined now by Amira El Gawabi, the Human Rights Coordinator for uh, an organization known as the Canadian Council on American Islamic Relations. We're also joined by Isen Gardi, who's the Executive Director of that same organization. Good to see you both. Thank you. Uh, and thanks for coming in to speak about this important issue that's uh, certainly uh, top of mind now for, for everybody in the country. And let's start with this, the news conference you held today, because I think there was an important message that that you wanted to convey to Canadians and you moved quickly uh, to hold this news conference to be able to do that. So what is the message you want to give to Canadians about what's developed here in the last 24 hours? Well, I think the first message that we wanted to say was that we, you know, we obviously praise the authorities for their work in preventing and thwarting this alleged attack and that's something that you know we're, we're all very appreciative of. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that obviously we want to make it clear that you know these acts are uh, the acts of individuals who have nothing uh, to do with the faith uh, that we interpret it as the mainstream. Uh, they're the acts of individuals and they should be viewed as such and we're very confident that our fellow Canadians will see it as such. Are, are you worried? Uh, how concerned are you about the possibility of, uh, of a backlash and that uh, the broader Muslim community gets gets painted with a negative brush because of and again their allegations the allegations against these two men I think there's always going to be a bit of concern when there is um, this sort of negative attention on the community however we have also underlined that um, this uh, this arrest and the authorities are saying that this arrest may not have even happened had it not been from a tip from within the Muslim community so I think from an, from an, imam, from an imam within the Trump. community that's right so I think what we want to just sort of underscore um, and and remind Canadians is that we, you know we're in it with everyone else. So we we have a stake in this country. We love Canada. We're part of can, uh, Canada and Canadian society. And um, the Muslim community is partners with the authorities, with all other Canadians, to make sure that uh, we remain safe. You, you made the, made the point today, and you, you make the point that it's imp it's important to have the government and and as the security forces did acknowledge that this plot began to unravel for, for the alleged perpetrators here because of this tip that came from an imam in Toronto. Um, how important is, is it for the community to have that acknowledgement? I think it's very important. I think it's important on a number of levels, both for the community, but as well for the the, the, the broader Canadian society as well, to hear that message that you know Canadian Muslims have the same worries and concerns, and are equally committed to the safety and security of this country. You know, terrorism is something that affects all of us. It doesn't discriminate. Um, so that's why the message that we wanted to send is that, you know. Because it affects all of us, we all have to be involved in, in the fight, finding a solution to it at all levels, from the political to the educational teachers uh, to community leaders as well. Uh, because this is a disease, and it's something that we all have to be in it together to fight. Are you confident that uh, that that all imams in Canada uh, would have taken the same action, would have, and will uh, report if they're concerned about? terrorist elements they they come across within their own communities? I think um, we underscore today with our Imam from here from Ottawa, Imam Sami Matwali, who said very strongly that it's actually a religious duty to stand up and uh, bring attention to any kind of danger that might be imminent um, to our community. So this is actually a religious duty. Um, all Imams should be aware of this better than myself. I mean, they study the Quran, they understand the uh, traditional teachings. Um, so it is actually intrinsic in our faith that, that extremism is, is not acceptable. Um, any type of extremism that would lead to violence especially is um, considered criminal and they have a duty to report it. They have a duty to speak out. And Peter, just if I can add to that, they've, they've done that in the past on repeated occasions. In 2005, CARECAN coordinated a national statement by 120 imams condemning terrorism and violent extremism in any form. And that was got so much attention that uh, a meeting was held shortly after with then Prime Minister um, Martin, who was coming to acknowledge the community taking this issue seriously. It was again echoed in 2010 when the Canadian Council of Imams, uh, which represents imams across Canada, came together and echoed the very same sentiments in that statement. Do you, do you, uh, as, you know, as two members of the community, uh, uh, let me make sure I, I, I frame this the right way. I mean, the, you know, the allegation against, and it's, again, I repeat that they're allegations against these two men, uh, suggests uh, a, a radical 
uh, Islamism and, and, a, and a desire, if the allegations are true, to, to, to hurt innocent people. And I guess, um, as members of the community, what, what do you see in here in the community when this kind of situation becomes public? And I guess the concern for a lot of people watching will be a, a, a wonder of how widespread it might be and how, where it comes from. I know there's a lot in that question, but so uh, maybe maybe start with the last part first. Uh, when you hear about like, where is this coming from? Where is this 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 case of radicalism coming from? Well, this particular case, as as was mentioned in the press conference and, and in the, that they held yesterday, these are two individuals who are not Canadian, right? And they're not youth either. They're 30 and 35 years old. So I think it's important to remember that it doesn't seem like these kinds of things fit any particular profile, right? And I think the security agencies, whether it's CSIS or the RCMP, are probably the best ones positioned to be able to speak to what is the level of the threat. I mean, Muslim organizations, individuals, communities, we can do our part. Uh, and we certainly do, and we take it very seriously in terms of outreach, in terms of communicating with the authorities and building those relationships so that the trust is in place, so that when these kinds of things come up, there's a relationship based on trust where the individuals, the imams, people feel comfortable going to authorities. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, Canadian Muslims have been in Canada for a very, very long time. Um, but there has been a large influx of new Muslims to Canada because of changes in immigration right. policy and multiculturalism. But this gentleman in Toronto, he's, he, uh, he's, he's been in the country 20 years, uh, according to the latest reports we have. He's, right. he's, not, he's a permanent resident and has right. been here a long time. So. Yeah, I, I think I think just basically, I mean, when you say what is the community reaction to this sort of thing, I think first of all, I mean, it's just always a shock and, you know, heartbreak, you know, to see, um, you know, that anyone uh, from uh, the Muslim community would have these sorts of I ideologies or thoughts. It actually winds up being quite shocking because these are not these sort of individuals. They are not. Um, I think they are aware that um, these sorts of views are just abhorrent because we complete we we often speak out against it. The imams um, often speak out against it. In the sermons, so they're not going to come around and, and be very vocal or very loud necessarily. Um, so I think people, when they when they do see these stories come out, I think it's always just very heartbreaking to, to think that people and would would associate um, the faith with such awful ideology. So will, will this will this case will this case be be discussed and talked about uh, at mosque? Given that this is in the news, would 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 there be an expectation that, as you mentioned, that imams will? address this issue uh, before their people? Yeah, I expect many imams will. I mean, immediately in the aftermath of, of last week's horrific bombings in, in Boston, I attended one mosque and I spoke to several other imams in Ottawa who said that they would be speaking to that very particular issue. Uh, you know, obviously you can't take a, a, a test of everybody was what everybody's speaking across the country, but I think since it's in the national um, public discourse, people will be talking about it. Okay, uh, let's finish on this. What, what, I mean, as part of that discussion, I mean, people will wonder what what is the Muslim community within itself doing uh, to fight uh, that kind of radicalism and to to speak out against it, to identify it, to educate uh, young Muslims in your community about it. Well, just a few weeks ago, actually, we had a huge youth conference here in Ottawa. It's one of the largest youth conferences that has been held. Um, we had thousands of young people, and we actually had a special session on radicalization. So we had um, a scholar um, and an imam uh, speaking to the community um, about the whole idea of radicalization in Islam, going actually to the scriptures, going to the narrations of the Prophet to talk about um, you know, the actual classical understanding of um, our place in society, our role as contributing citizens, and talking about how radicalization radicalization has nothing to do. We asked people, we asked young people to speak up, to say if they've heard something. Um, we didn't hear much from, from people, but they were there and they were listening. So I think that perhaps if, if it is happening in communities, um, you know, our role as leaders is to, com you know, to constantly give them that opportunity to speak about it, to ask questions, to make sure that the imam, the leadership are there to answer the questions that they may have and counter um, whatever negative ideology they're getting from wherever they might be getting it. Okay, listen, thank you. Thank you both for coming in to speak about it. Um, it's uh, good to get your perspective, and I appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for giving us the opportunity. Thank you.